Ladies and gentlemen, good day and welcome to H2FY24 results conference call of TGCO Studios Limited, hosted by Kiran Advisors. As a reminder, all participant lines will be in the listen-only mode, and there will be an opportunity for you to ask questions after the presentation concludes. Should you need assistance during the conference call, please signal an operator by pressing the star then zero on your touchstone phone. Please note that this conference is being recorded. I now hand the con conference over to Ms. Chandri from Kiran Advisors. Thank you and over to you, ma'am. Thank you. On the behalf of Kiran Advisors, I welcome you all to the conference call of Disico Studios Limited. From management side, we have Mr. Abhishek Moore, Managing Director. Now I hand over the call to Mr. Abhishek Moore. Over to you, sir. Thank you, Jani. Good evening, everyone. My name is Abhishek Moore, and I'm the Managing Director of Digico Studios Limited. Uh, along with me from Digico, I have Ms. Henny Pahuja, Ms. Sureka Misal, and Mr. Srinivas Bede as well joining this call from Digico. So, welcome to the H2 and FY24 Earnings Conference Call for Digico Studios Limited. It's a pleasure to have each of you here today as we reflect on the significant accomplishments and advancements we've made during this period. Before we delve into the specifics of our performance, I'd like to provide a brief overview of Digico Studios Limited. At Digico, we take immense pride in being one of the leading technology-driven visual effects studios. Our commitment to excellence is reflected in the comprehensive range of services we offer, all managed by seasoned professionals. Utilizing state-of-the-art technology and proprietary tools, we ensure that each project we undertake meets the highest standards of quality. This dedication has positioned us as the preferred choice for major studios around the globe. Our portfolio boasts an impressive array of blockbuster movies and acclaimed television shows, including, but not limited to Thor, Love and Thunder, Black Panther, Wakanda Forever, and Stranger Things. We have had the privilege of collaborating with esteemed names such as Disney, Marvel, Netflix, and Warner Brothers, among others. Our team's unwavering dedication and ingenuity have enabled us to tackle challenges head-on, delivering results that exceed expectations time and again. Recent highlights at DigiCourse, some of the new things that have taken place out here. Obviously, one of the most important things is the strategic hiring of senior talent across Canada and U.S. I'm glad to announce that we have onboarded seasoned professionals like Jason Sperling, who joins us as creative director and VFX supervisor, bringing with him a wealth of industry experience and a strong network of connections. For most of you who don't know, Jason's last role was head of VFX Netflix U.S. and Canada. He comes in with over 25 years of experience in the industry, highly respected individual in the industry within Netflix and outside Netflix, and obviously we get to immensely benefit from all of the connections that Jason brings along with him to the company. The other person whom we are really excited about is Marina Abram. She's joined us as executive producer. With over 17 years of industry experience and a track record of working on exceptional visual effects projects, uh, you know, she brings in tremendous value to DigiCore. In her last role, she was visual effects producer at Star Trek for several seasons. And uh, thanks to her efforts, we've already uh, started working on the Star Trek uh, universe, which is a huge big breakthrough for DigiCore. And uh, it should lead to substantial revenue for many, many years for DigiCore. David Crawford joins us as head of studio in Montreal. With three decades of experience in VFX and a portfolio boasting blockbusters like Titanic and Spider-Man, David's innovation approach and management expertise will play a pivotal role in driving our growth. Obviously, we have many more hires at junior levels, but yeah, these are the three key hires and the three key driving forces for DigiCore who are going to be leading the growth of DigiCore North America over the years to come. While these hirings have been recent, we expect the impact, obviously, like I said, to be significant in the near future. Furthermore, we are proud to introduce, which is our most 
you know, we've been really excited about the platform, which is Digico's cloud-based platform for rental of virtual production sets. We have launched, I'm really happy to inform that we have launched the beta version of vpsets.com, that is www.vpsets.com. We have, as we speak, we have 20 potential customers as beta users of our website. We are in touch with over 300 potential customers of our website. And this service is the first of its kind in the world. In fact, this would be the first endeavor where anybody is making to convert a service into a SaaS-based product. So that really gives us a huge advantage over anybody else in the world, not just in India. It goes without saying our commitment to innovation uh, is our investment in research and development. Digicode is among the very few studios in the world that invest substantially in R&D because we do believe that R&D, while many people think it's a waste of money, but we strongly believe R&D is a thing that is our edge and that's going to take us way ahead of most people in the years to come. Turning to our financial performance, in FY24, our standalone performance showed significant growth across all major financial metrics. Compared to FY23, total income increased by 33.08% over FY23, rising from 35.8 crores to 47.2 crores. This boost in revenue reflects our successful market expansion and operational improvements. We must understand one thing, that an IPO is not magic. It's not that you do an IPO today and you start doing double and triple revenue in two or three months. It obviously, in, if the, our investments are in the right place, and one good thing is, yes, we have growth over FY23. FY24, FY25, FY26 are investments uh, that we are making in the right places, in the right expansion uh, programs, are going to bear fruits in the, year, in the months and quarters to come. Our EBITDA has more than doubled reaching 15.29 crores, a 104.35% increase from last year's 7.48 crores, highlighting our enhanced operational efficiency. The EBITDA margin also saw a substantial rise, improving by 1127 BPS to 32.30. Our PAT nearly doubled, growing by 118% to 9.55 crores, with the PAT margin increasing by 789 BPS to 20.19. Our consolidated financials for FY24 are equally impressive. Total income up by 33.83% from 36.92 to 49.42. The EBITDA grew significantly by 118% to 15.28 crores, reflecting improved efficiency across the board. This resulted in the EBITDA margin of 30.92. Our PAT also saw an exceptional increase of 144% over F523, reaching 9.53 crores. So as we've seen, if you're comparing F523 to F524, there has been substantial growth already. And as we look ahead, we are looking at these numbers growing at a much faster pace because then the effects of the investments that we are making into U.S. and Canada will take place. Majority of these numbers that you see in uh, the results now, uh, if these are not really from the effects of the IPO, it is just too soon for the effects of those that investment to take place. I believe the effects of those numbers will start showing in our FY24-25 results, and uh, we are really excited about that. So, uh, again, you know, Welcome, all of you, and now uh, I'm leaving the floor open to the Q&A session. Thank you very much. We will now begin the question and answer session. Anyone who wishes to ask a question may press star and one on their touchstone telephone. If you wish to remove yourself from the question queue, you may press star and two. Participants are requested to use handset while asking a question. Ladies and gentlemen, we will wait for a moment while the question queue assembles. The first question is from the line of Parikshita Kabra from PKD Advisors. Please go ahead. Hi, Abhishek. Uh, thanks for the opportunity and congratulations on your results. Thank uh, you, sir. I was just wondering, first was, um, 
Uh, is there, can you give us a split between uh, the the VFX revenue versus the revenue that you generate from the shows that you also produce? We already actually split that up. If you see in our uh, profit and loss, uh, we currently put the OTT revenue as other revenue. Okay, great. All right. Uh, so that number uh, is two crores. That's all that that is. Two crores out yes. OTT. We started that. The whole process of OTT, so we have only two shows up online right now, 16 episodes. But the uh, projections for 24, 25, you set the base now, and uh, we are looking at uh, very healthy double-digit crore numbers for 24, 25 from our OTT business. Because this is the first year testing the waters. We couldn't, you know, do too much. But yes, now is the time when we take this up and scale it. Got it. And secondly, in terms of the revenue, uh, on a sequential basis, uh, you know, we have moved from, uh, and I'm only looking at VFX right now, from 24.8 to 22.4. Um, so there has not been a significant increase there. And we have about 450 employees, which seems to be some of what our competitors also have, with a much substantially higher revenue. So how, how do I read into that? With a much substantially higher, sorry, I didn't get you out of that. The revenue, the same amount employee count, approximately the same employee count of 450 people, and the revenue which is almost double what our revenue is. See, honestly, I'm, I'm, I can't compare with others, and that's not right for me or you to. Uh, you can compare, obviously, but I cannot compare with others. They must be doing something differently. We are doing something differently. Uh, we are able to achieve this with uh, the numbers that we have in terms of employees. We haven't really seen what they do and why they are able to achieve much higher numbers. We are, and we do believe, so today you are comparing us with the listed entity, but when we compare ourselves with the industry at large, we are very much in uh, line with what the industry at large, which would include not a comparison between just three companies, but <clears throat> comparing Digico with probably 20 or 30 other companies <clears throat> in the industry. So I would suggest, you know, if you can do that, it would be a better picture. So if when you compare, it's always better to get a larger uh, pool of people to compare. No, so it's it's basically what is available at my disposable uh, disposal. Uh, Vishek, I I, no, I, no, I appreciate that. Yeah, I completely understand. Yeah. So when we also compare, but see, for us also to compare, we have to compare with uh, the industry, right? There's an industry standard. So we do believe that we are very much in line with the industry standard. And the lack of sequential growth, Abhishek, what can we see into that? Two reasons. So every business has, uh, it's, you know, there are many businesses which are seasonal. So today let's look at a air conditioner brand or an ice cream brand. The first quarter would be the strongest, summers. After that, every quarter would be weak because it's seasonal, right? You cannot expect an air conditioner brand to deliver second quarter better than first quarter. It's, it's impossible. Same way, in the visual effects industry or the filmmaking industry, the two things that have affected our H2 uh, revenue, not too much though, we, we've tried to do our best to reach where we are. But yes, two things did affect us. One, the strikes, which everybody knows that it was there. And two, in general, in general, if you look at it, the H2 in the film industry is historically weaker than H1 because H2 may... Uh, November 20th, November 25th onwards after Thanksgiving, the industry goes on a standstill. Okay. Majority of the people then come back to work, you know, early January, which is a very standard thing. US and Europe, everybody knows it's closed. Filming does not happen. New projects are not really taking shape that time. So when you're looking at semi, uh, most studios shutting, not doing too much work at that time, it's standard because you're losing literally a month, month and a half out of six months on a slowdown period. So it's not about this year, for that matter, even if you begin into financials of most, you know, companies in the film industry, or even many IT companies for that matter, you'll see H1 is always stronger than H2 when they're especially working with US and European markets. Got it. And the onslaught of the, uh, of the pent-up demand, are you seeing that already, or that is not yet started coming? <clears throat> we are right now I would say very conservatively, very on a very conservative level, 
we are in talks with productions which have VFX total VFX budgets of over 50 million dollars. So productions are already on floor. We've already started getting in quite a bit of work. Like I said, we've already started getting work from Star Trek, which is one of the biggest wins for us this year. So it has started coming in, but I would really say the full fledged effect of the lock, uh, not lockdown, sorry, the strike. And because a lot of productions are in process right now. In our, in our industry, it's the pre-production that takes place first, then the production, and we come last in the chain of work, right? So many productions are on floor, and we estimate the VFX boom to really start from late June, early July. The boom. Got it. Perfect. I'll come back, Abhishek. Thanks a lot. Sure. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Imran from Lobo India Capital. Please go ahead. Sure. Yeah. Hi. Uh, good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for the opportunity. I will uh, start my questions on the balance sheet first before I move to the other things. My first question is on uh, the receivable part. Uh, you mentioned in your commentary that, uh, you know, you have not seen impact of IPO proceeds as of now in your business. However, your, your revenue, uh, your receivables tells a different story altogether, about 25. Almost all of the money is into receivables. Uh, so how would you grow then if, if all the money is into receivables, you don't have cash? Uh, how, how do you grow in the, in the, in the next year? No, no, no. I don't understand. You say all the money, which all which money is into receivables. Uh, so it's, it's roughly about 24, 20, 25 crores, right? That is correct. And that is also the reason, the reason for that is, uh, let me tell you now. Okay, so September is when the, uh, you know, strikes open. October, November, this year, obviously, December, a lot of filming happened. When most of the work actually came to us, so December, January were little weak months for us because a lot of filming or post strikes were happening out there. Tons and tons of work for the last six months, majority of them has come to us between end January, February, March. Uh, so that's why they're yet in receivables because our average payment terms are anywhere between 60 days to 90 days. So while a lot of the work, yes, it is, uh, uh, it, I'm not saying it is, Troubling our cash flow, but yes, it does, uh, you know, hamper the cash flow to a very large extent, but uh, we are managing. It's not that we are in any state of cash flow issues. We are pretty comfortable on our cash flows and we are confident of seeing this through uh, the uh, receivables that are there. Uh, right. So, so this also indicates that you are, you have started uh, collecting and you must have collected Obviously, collections have started. No, collections have started. Collections have started. It, but it's not that the entire 27, 24, 25 is coming, but collections have started. And I must tell you one more thing. The lot on the, it's not only us, right? So these larger studios who've been impacted, and that's a that in fact. The larger studios who've been impacted by the strikes, who's to pay in 30 days is now paying in 60 days. Who's to pay in 60 days is now, because even they are trying to figure out their cash flows. As an example, you know, Tippett, uh, uh, bought, you know, fight for bankruptcy. So people are struggling in the U.S. See, in India, when you know, when you have closures of two, three months, four months, because of the lower cost of operations, we are able to manage. But out there, a hundred percent VFX company, it's a few million dollars of uh, outflow every month. Right. So just the scale of management is very large. But the entire industry is struggling with cash flow right now. It's not only us. But everybody's managing, we, as, as us, we are also managing the cash flows pretty well. And we don't see this as an alarming issue. Uh, right, right. The other question, I'll, I'll club maybe all the questions on the balance sheet now because of the sure. velocity of time. Uh, see, I think you have a lot of capital work in progress now from 2 crores to it is now 6 crores. Intangible assets, I can understand you have created this, uh, you know, uh, platform. So, so That's that right. That. Uh, so six crores. This is an addition of four crores in the work, uh, you know, capital work in progress. Then there are, there are some other current assets which have gone from two crores to six crores. Uh, some short-term loans and advances again gone from two and a half to four point eight something. So uh, net net about eight ten crores in fact. So can you can you tell us what what all these are? Okay, so this I'm going to let Soreka or Srinivas handle because they are the finance people. Uh, okay, so uh, I think they'll be in a better position yeah, to answer that, honestly. Maybe later they can answer these questions. 
Sure. Uh, the other question that I have is, uh, or maybe this is a clue to the you know the the current question. Your employee cost has, I don't know why it has reduced, and then you know the other expenses have gone up slightly. Uh, so just trying to understand what is happening here. Well, other expenses also include uh, towards our Canada and US operations. Right. So, so that is there. Obviously, you know the the team in India because of January and February being slow, we are not at 450 today. We are obviously much lesser than 450. But we also it it didn't make sense in January, February for us to when we saw after the strike. So we did reduce some manpower, and that's why you see the effect out there. But it's not like Sare Chaat So say saw pe aage. It's a slight mm-hmm. reduction even in terms of manpower. But that's a good step, right? Because we're trying to save on uh, cost. Right. Right. And just one last question, and then I'll move to the queue. I wanted to know how many people you have in Canada now. So it's not only Canada, it's US and Canada. So we have a total of one, two, three, four senior people and one, two, three, four, five, six, seven uh, artist level people. Uh, Okay. Okay. Thank you. I'll move to the queue. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Vivek from Shanti Financial. Please go ahead. Hi, Vivek. Yes, uh, thank you. So we had we have these wonderful results from your firm, and um, uh, my first question is: Do you see a similar trajectory or a better trajectory of growth uh, in the next two years? And uh, the second question is: uh, How would you position yourself? Because as you said, there are. Uh, a mini set of uh, you know equal uh, uh, players in the market, but there are three companies that we kind of uh, look at in the listed space in India. How would you position yourself as unique? Uh, the VP sets is a very beautiful uh, solution that you're bringing in the SaaS space. But apart from that, what is the positioning of Digico which is unique, which uh, compels customers to look at uh, you? Thank you. Brilliant. I'm going to answer both your questions. First is we are very excited and confident of maintaining a similar growth trajectory. In fact, in the revenue side, our growth trajectory is going to be much more than the difference between 23 and 24 because we're going to start seeing revenue from Canada as well. So on a consolidated basis, uh, the revenue projections are, are, are definitely much more in terms of growth numbers. Uh, now, talking about the difference, I'll be honest with you. When you when you come to VFX, it will be very stupid for any company in India to say that I'm different from the other because everybody is the same. Okay. There is no major difference on the VFX side. Now, let's talk about as a company. I'm a huge fan of cricket. Ten years back, a batsman and a bowler were given, you know, the main advantage. But today, an all-rounder is. An all-rounder is invaluable. We've seen that in sport. We've seen that in, you know, general. The perception has changed. Uh, Digicore is an all-rounder, and Digicore is the only all-rounder in the visual effects slash entertainment space in India. One end, we have visual effects where we are growing extremely fast, embracing technology among the forerunners when it comes to, you know, integrating AI with visual effects. On the other end, we have VPSets.com, the first of its kind and the only platform in the world uh, for uh, renting of virtual production assets. So technically, we have been able to productize a service, which is a huge benefit for any company. And on the third side, we have the production of content for uh, branded production of branded content. So it's not really production of fiction content. We do production of branded content, which is a very unique uh, business model by itself. And I'm, I'm, I'm I'd be surprised if there's anybody else in India using our model in production of branded content. Why we do this? There's a very valid reason for this. Visual effects is at the end of the day, it is a service-based industry. We are doing project-based service. A project-based service will always have little ups and downs. It's very rare that, you know, you have every month, every month you have new project, new project. There are times when you have, let's say, a week, 10 days, 15 days of, you know, little lesser projects. We've had times when we've had to refuse work in one month, and next month we've had 10 days free. But that's the way it is. That's a project-based business. We needed some things to stabilize this, to ensure that we have longevity as a company because of AI also coming in. And that's when we started working on 
you know, BP sets almost now two years ago, the content maybe 12 to 14 months ago. And we are seeing the fruits of this early decisions that we took. And I can proudly say that today we have ensured longevity for DigiCore. Whether there is AI disrupting VFX or not, nobody knows. But even if it does 1%, I think we have safeguarded and protected DigiCore as a company uh, for many, many years. We are among the very few animation and VFX companies in India who has survived 24 years. You can, you know, just if you have, whenever you have time, you can go through a history of VFX and animation companies over the last 15, 20 years. You find two or three out of the 200 who survived 24 years. Because we've always innovated. We've come out with new areas of revenue within the industry to ensure that we are not impacted by new technology that disrupts uh, the business. Any any projection for the industry's growth? Uh, I'm talking about the Indian industry, which is catering to the global marketplace. Any projection or reports, uh, industry reports that we can refer to? Uh, I don't have those figures, so I, I cannot comment on that. What what DigiCore is a very simple goal. The global VFX industry is ten billion dollars, and we want a small pie of that. We are. Our immediate goals over the next three years is to grab $25 million out of that, which on a very logical sense for a company to have approved, who, who is approved by Disney, Warner, Paramount, Sony, and all of the majors, to grab $25 million pie out of a $10 billion market is not very difficult. So our goal is that, uh, we and we are focused on achieving our goals. $25 million in how many years? Uh in two years time two years okay thank you all the best thank you thank you before we take the next question we would like to remind participants that you may press star in one to ask a question the next question is from the line of ankit podar from refex industry please go ahead hello hello abhishek yes ankit hi yeah, hi. I just want to ask uh, two questions. One is uh, the financial results which you have uh, now uh, in your website of the company, DigiCore VFX, it's not uploaded. So I think uh, corporate uh, governance is important. So one is it's not imp uh, uploaded. Second is... It we, just, we, just, uh, uh, we just uploaded that to NFC like, uh, 45 minutes ago. It should be uploaded as, a, as a company, as a good policy, I think we should upload on the website also. Which will be and, uh, Yeah, and the second thing is the I in your cash flow statements, sorry, in your uh, P and L account, I am seeing that there is a tax expense uh, relating to the uh, profit of the current year and also some uh, deferred tax and uh, tax of earlier periods. But in your cash flow statement, uh, you are showing tax paid as nil. So I think there is some why is there a discrepancy like that? Direct tax paid as definitely company will have some uh, advanced tax or uh, TDS. And if there is something uh, shown in P&L, that is why is not getting reflected. Second point. Third point is, uh, I, uh, I see from your balance sheet that your intangible assets have increased from 32 crores to 263, sorry, 32 lakhs to 263 lakhs. But your depreciation has not increased uh, proportionately. Depreciation is just increased by uh, from 103 lakhs to 118 lakhs. Why is there, uh, you know, such an increase in intangible assets, but depreciation has not increased? That's all. So that I would leave, leave again to Sureka or Srinivas to answer because they are better at answering that. Yes. Hello. Uh, just to explain yeah. you, uh, uh, the uh, second point which you asked about the increase in the uh, the okay. fixed asset, but not increase in the depreciation. So actually, you see that increase into the CW by, CWIC, that is capital working progress. So that is not at capitalized. And so maybe that... that no, I am telling fixed assets, not capital working progress. Fixed assets, your intangible assets have increased from 32 crores to 263 crores. No, 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 no not 32 crores to 263 crores. 32 lakhs, sorry. 32 lakhs to 263 ah. lakhs. Yeah. Lakhs, yeah. But depreciation, so almost it's like a, a nine, almost eight and a half times. But depreciation in the profit and loss is 
uh, from uh, 103 lakhs to 118 lakhs. I mean, it's just a 12-13 percent increase, depreciation. Why? If you see that uh, capitalization, what you are seeing from 260, uh, 2 crore 63 lakhs to 32 lakhs, that is because that uh, capitalization has been done in the latter part of the financial year. That's how. And that, uh, that uh, mm -hmm. appreciation will definitely will be proportionately on that part only, that period only. Okay. And the cash flow thing? The cash flow thing, I definitely I have just checked that. And it, if it is done, we will uh, update that definitely. If it is, uh, because we have the tax flow and uh, in in the tax uh, profit and loss account, we have the uh, advance tax paid, and we also had a deferred tax uh, liability. So we recognize the tax deferred tax asset as well there. Okay. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Shripal from HNI. Please go ahead. Hi, hello, Abhishek. Yes, hi there. Yeah, yeah, Abhishek, I just want to know, I, I just uh, saw the cash flow. So, uh, in regard with the working capital, I can see the receivables are piled up, and uh, but uh, there is also an increase in borrowing. So, what is this long-term borrowing all about? Uh, if you can just tell us. So we we also we got an increase from our bank on the CC limits that we enjoyed. So that that is that is the long term borrowing that you're talking about. But that would come under short term borrowing. But uh, do you have a vision of uh, repaying this loan or keeping this uh, loan uh, as it is like that? Or you want no, to no, no. Obviously, not see our cash flow as you can see because of the receivables from uh, our clients. They are uh, so obviously as we are receiving money. Uh, and that's a working capital, right? So as investor, we would like that there should not be any borrowing. Uh, that's oh, the as, even as a company, we would like that there is no borrowing. Yeah. Okay. Secondly, uh, I just wanted to know uh, the market share currently which we hold and what is the uh, competition in the market uh, and where we stand. Uh, just a brief, uh, I know you have discussed this, the global market size and all this, but currently where are we standing in that? And uh, uh, what is our uh, immediate target for, uh, in the next year? Currently, where do we stand in the global market size in terms of revenue? Obviously, we are minuscule. Uh, we yeah. primarily been an India-based studio doing revenues of you know six million, five million dollars. The small, small boutique VFX studios in the US do that much, right? So, if you look at the global perspective, we are minuscule. But now, with the expansion that we are, we've already already started with the hiring of the teams in North America and the U.S., and with our fully owned subsidiary active in Canada, uh, we definitely, yeah, you know, it, 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 that is, I wouldn't say never say never. It's not that we can't become a $100 million company. Yes, we can. But like I said, our initial goal is $25 million, which would position us as a small to mid-sized VFX studio, a mid-sized VFX studio in the U.S. So our first goal is that, and to when we, all the steps that we are taking is to achieve a $25 million revenue within two years' time. Okay, uh, great. Uh, last question. Uh, so I saw your Apeli results. So Apeli results are a uh, uh, little bad than the H1. Uh, but uh, the, do we uh, have this season uh, every year or is it only for this? Uh, yeah, that we see H2. No. So I tell you, there are two reasons why the H2 results are lower than H1 results. Both of them are. You mentioned this earlier in the call, but I just want to know whether it will be uh, like this uh, uh, every time, or uh, this year was anything uh, specific. Yeah, I'll tell you. Historically, Digicore has seen H2 weaker than H1, but I'll tell you how it goes now. Let's say in H2, I get a, you see, we are project-based, right? Now, let's say H1, may I get a project in July, which is like, let's say, a 10 crore rupee project. I can't go and tell the client, yeah, I have 5 crore H2, H1, I have 5 crore H2, I have 5 crore H2, I have 5 crore H2, or vice yeah. versa, right? It's a project. It's not something like, you know, I'm in the retail industry, as I have got 100 distributors, now tomorrow I've got, next quarter I've got 110 distributors, 120, which is a linear growth. In our case, it could be that, you know, one quarter I get a crazy project and next quarter is weak. But then 
Unfortunately, that's not in my hand because it is a project-based business. But to answer your question, historically, H2 has been weaker than H1, at least for Digicore. I don't know other companies, but uh, it's just that the industry is that way. Uh, and if and, you know, there are times. Yes, there have been times when we've got a fabulous project in H2, and that time H2 has taken off. But that's again, it's a project based, like I said. Coming back to H2 for this year, our top line hasn't taken such a big beating, but our bottom line has, and there's a reason for bottom line to take this beating because of the salary investments that we have made in US and Canada over the last five months, which has mainly been in H2. The results of which will show, it's not that today I place a person or you hire a person in your company and from the from the next week onwards, the revenue starts flowing behind that. It is a period. So if we have uh, taken a beating on our pack, it is a temporary beating, not because the business has gone bad, not because our margins in general have fallen, only because of the one time extra expenses we have had for our teams that we have set up in U.S. and Canada. Okay. If, if, uh, if uh, such a thing happens, I think then the board should consider whether it should be shown as an exceptional item or not. Uh, that I think you can uh, do it like that so that uh, uh, by uh, by seeing the financials in the P&L, the H2 uh, is the path uh, is uh, like off the H, H1. So, uh, uh, so it does not look correct. If it is in the exceptional item or if it is a one-time expense, then uh, probably we, we get a better understanding of the PNL and we can understand ourselves. But I'm, if I'm, I'm, I'm not a finance uh, specialist or here, but just for my knowledge, if we didn't show that as an expense in India, which we have technically, uh, and we showed that as an exceptional item in the India balance sheet, but in the Canadian company's balance sheet, then that would come as an expense, no? Yeah, it will still part be of expense only, but uh, if you yeah. show it as an exceptional item, we can consider every year that... Ah, you, then you uh, show it as an exceptional uh, item, uh, and then the problem uh, is the pack. The pack yeah. goes up and accordingly. Right? But yeah, but this is a one-time affair, which is uh, which had to be done. The whole purpose of the IPO was to grow and you know, get that team in place out there. When you set up new teams, the results will take three to six months to show. Okay. Uh, that's all. That's all. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Gaurav Sajdeev, an individual investor. Please go ahead. Hello. I'm audible. Yes. Hi, Gaurav. Yeah. Hello, sir. Uh, sir, although you have already given the reason for the low bottom line in S2, uh, but I want to ask for the FY25. Uh, as a, a two three months before in the Alliance Capital Con call, you guided for twenty five percent start margin for FY twenty five. Are you still on? As of now, we are. We haven't, uh, you know, moved out from there. So as of now, we are. It's too early for the full financial year to, uh, to comment on it. Uh, definitely, I will be in a better position when I'm when when, when we are at H one FY twenty five. But in the month and in the period gone so far in the year, there's been no change in that, in our uh, plans for that. And what about top line, sir? What is the expected top line in FY25? Top line, our internal target is 100 crores, but to be very, very honest, uh, we are, you know, our inter like I said, our internal target is 100 crores, but anywhere, anything between 80 to 100, I think so we would be doing exceptionally well, because 80 would be close to 100% over... Uh, FI24. Okay. Thanks. That's so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Sandeep Dixit from Alchev Partners. Please go ahead. Okay, thank you. Um, just a clarification. If I look at these numbers of employee benefit expenses, uh, last, the first half it was 6.96 crores. It has actually fallen to 5.05 crores. Yes, so I did. Have... I did mention no, that we did reduce some people in the uh, December January period because of uh, the impact of the strikes. Right, we were carrying a cost that time, and it is natural for a business to take a call and uh, reduce the team even when the work is thinned down a little at, in that period. 
Okay. So, is this also related to the jump in uh, technical subcontractors, which has gone from two crores to five per three factors? I presume you took them off the off the rolls and uh, hired them as consultants. Many of them, they were off the rolls. They were taken as uh, uh, you know, um, you know, um, what do you call that? Consultants, just for the heck of it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know. Yeah. Uh, and then obviously there was some subcontracting also done when the work suddenly started coming in. So uh, that is why the technical subcontractors has gone up. Okay, thanks. Um, the the next question is you mentioned twenty five dollars, twenty five million dollars as your goal in two years time. So is that FY twenty six two years or FY twenty seven two years? FY twenty six. Okay. Uh, last question uh, is earlier call you had mentioned that your tax margins will be thirty to thirty five percent. No, we. I'm sorry. I'm sorry, sir. But we. I can. I don't know if I don't. I don't have recording of any calls. But in in none of my calls we've ever mentioned the part. I part margins as 30 or 35 percent. Never, ever. We've always uh, mentioned the part margins to be between 24 to 26 percent, and endeavour to increase that by a percentage or two. But we've never ever discussed 30, 35 percent. Okay, so maybe I got this wrong. But uh, this was discussion regarding the direct work. Uh, you had mentioned that you. Aim to get to a mix of direct projects of, uh, of about 50 percent. So this year, that is our target uh, to have at least 50 to 60 percent of direct work compared to uh, outsource. Okay, so that 25 percent tax margin you are guiding right now is based on a 50 percent uh, uh, direct because, projects. Right? Because the uh, expenses, I uh, see, if we if we were to if if we were only India based with no major overheads in the US and Canada. Mm -hmm. And if my direct work grew from the current, uh, let's say, you know, 25 to 50 percent, my PAT margins would go up to 30, 35 percent. Correct. But what is happening is that even though my direct uh, work uh, ratio will go up, but my overheads because of the high salaries in the US have increased, so that will offset the PAT margins, and yet uh, keep the PAT margins yet in the 24, 25, 26 percent range. Okay, that's good. Thank you. I just wanted to clarify that. Correct. Thank you, sir. Thank you very much. Thank you. The next question is from the line of Tushar Sarda from Athena Investment. Please go ahead. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity. I want to understand your business. So you said it's a project business. Uh, so do you build on completion of milestones or? Do you build on uh, manpower basis? How does uh, how, no, no. how does the client uh, give you the work? No, building is never on manpower. Uh, we get let's say a job which which could be anywhere from 10 shots to maybe 500 shots, 700 shots project. We estimate the cost. We send them a quotation, not in terms of man days or anything. A quotation, let's say, shot wise. So this shot is going to cost thousand dollars. This shot is going to cost five hundred dollars. This shot is going to cost three thousand dollars. So if there are five hundred shots, there are five hundred Excel line items with a cost for each shot. It really depends now when you're talking about milestone based or uh, you know at the end of the project. There are various factors in this client value of project. A type of client, whether direct client or uh, you know or outsource work. So this is not one size fits all. Uh, if the project is, we typically see if the project is over you know forty, fifty thousand dollars or seventy thousand dollars, then it will take milestone based. But honestly, milestone based bolne ki baat hoti hai. Let's say take let's take a client like Apple. We just did a show with Apple. In a client like Apple, Disney, there are twenty levels of approval that they need. Why the contract may say 50% or 30% on award, 30% after delivery of X number of shots, and 30% after that. I have seen where we've delivered 80% of the project and we're yet waiting for the uh, you know uh, award is 30% on award money to come. They have too many levels of approval. So these are all very good things to say, and we're not in a position because see these are all time bound. The TV series, the film, these are all time bound, right? They have release dates. So everybody is under tremendous time-bound pressure. So I cannot tell them, "Give me, you give me my 30% advance. I'm not starting otherwise." But most of the industry does work that way. So it's 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 a, it's a hypothetical situation to say, you know, uh, the. No, no, I I'm not on payment. I'm asking, how do you book the revenue? You will book the revenue. We book, no, no, we we we. It's not mandate based. It's not mandate based. It's not hourly based. It's a pure 
costs that we give them of uh, based on our calculation of how many man days are being used and what is our man day rate we multiply that but they don't know the internal working of that obviously so you book based on work done or you book based on billing is what my question is because that will impact how revenue comes in the books you know it can no, become no, very large I, i can't book on what's done right i have to book on uh, so billing yeah, like i said no, how i billing i don't know so billing also like i said like no like billing can be two types one billing can be when the project is completed and one billing can be milestone based billing so it really depends from client to client and project to project it's not that every project is at the end of the project we bill and every project we get milestone based Okay. So, two related questions: What is the average size of the project and average duration of the project? A typical size. As on today, as on today, when we look at direct projects, the average size of the direct project we are experiencing is around hundred and fifty, two hundred thousand dollars maybe for a direct project. When we do outsource work, let's say a large VFX studio in the US. there there is no it's not really project you know we don't get uh, project based there you know one week they'll send us a bid we send them back awarded next week they'll send us more bids awarded so there it's mostly you know they keep sending us bids every week there are certain clients that send us bid every 3 days or 4 days as they keep getting shots so we keep delivering we work on multiple projects with them at the same time so to really give you an average uh, value per project that is more relevant to the direct project that we do where it is around i would say 100 to 150 maybe 150000 dollars is a great average that i can consider and what time does it take you to complete the project like so it's like let's say uh, a 100 to 150000 dollar project would be delivered in a month month and a half max if it's a 300000 dollar project it could go up to maybe you know 3 and a half four months and what are you don't sub contract right you do all the work in house except for the technical people they are hired but are they in house or there there are, there are times when we also have to sub contract a little we have verified vendors it's natural because uh, let's say you know there is my roto team is full already doing work i get another project at that time which involves roto so you know all vfx studios work together very closely and this is actually a very weird industry by the way it's a lovely industry because nobody considers each other competition we all get work done from each other uh, when the time comes which is technically subcontracting so a lot of vfx studios work very closely with each other thanks thanks for your answer thank you thank you Ladies and gentlemen in order to ensure that the management is able to address questions from all participants in the con- conference please limit your questions to two per participants Ladies and gentlemen to ask a question you may press star and one The next question is from the line of Vedan Sarda an individual investor please go ahead Hello Mr Vedan your line has been unmuted please go ahead with your question hello mr vidan your line has been unmuted hello hello yes sir yeah now we say uh, my question yes good evening vidan yes good evening so my question is about uh, the increase in the cost of technical subcontractors and uh, the decrease in the cost of employee benefit expense are they related like uh, have you yeah yeah yeah, yeah. I, i just answered that uh, sometime back with on maybe i missed that oh yeah so i tell you what so during the period of january december january since there was which like like i said there's always a slow down a during that period and b uh, the effects of the strike we we had to reduce some manpower and then suddenly which is natural that january end the work comes up but you don't get manpower like almost like aaj phone kiya kal aage so that, that is why uh, and obviously there are some people who were on contract as well so that is why the reduction in cost of uh, the manpower and increase in the cost of technical subcontractors but there also some outsourcing that happens at that time yeah so okay. when the work and suddenly the comes in with a flow when the work suddenly comes in with a, in large chunks your it it's not that a 100% team that was delivering 100 shots can suddenly deliver 200 shots just because the work has come in a large flow understood 
and what about the h1 to h2 uh, is it maintain uh, is the seasonality maintained in the next two years what are you expecting on that yeah, historically we've always seen h2 weaker than h1 but again like i said nobody can say because i could get a huge project in h2 and this is project based and i again explained that right when a client is giving me a project i cannot say that give me half now and half in next half because so that my you know h1 h2 looks safe if a project comes we take it right so there will be years when h1 is strong there will be years when h2 is strong but in 9 out of 10 cases h1 will be always be strong okay thank you yeah anish thank you thank you the next question is from the line of amit j an individual investor please go ahead hello am i audible yes amit hi hi uh, good evening abhishek Actually, I am not happy with the quality of the statement which you signed and the auditor signed. If we go to the consolidator uh, statement, there is a silly mistake. Like uh, if you see the half yearly, five thirty point point five five lakh forty five thousand five lakh thirty five lakh point sixty one. Then in September two thousand thirty twenty three half yearly, you have just put two one two. And then, what is it? Seven four eight. Can so, you tell how me? How to do the mathematical calculation? With which statement? With which which figure you're talking of in the consolidated? Consolidated pre-order account. You can go to that. Let me yeah, take the example of all the technical subcontractor. So just give me one second. Sorry, I'm just because I, I, I can answer your question only if I see it. So just give me a second. Consolidated. Uh, yeah. Okay. I am at consolidated. PNL. So let's go to the line of that cost of technical subcontractor. Yeah. You can see here figure five three five point six one for the half year ended thirty first March two thousand twenty four, and if you see half year ending two two thousand twenty three September thirty two one two rounded off. So how to do the calculation of the full year? Understood. No, I appreciate that. I appreciate that, and that is something which is uh, which we need to take a note of, and I appreciate the feedback on that. That that shouldn't have been rounded, and that should have been given in the points. Uh, the like like you know, March thirty first two zero two four. I really appreciate. And surprisingly, that. your auditor quality auditor also signed. I am actually surprised. Okay, yeah, anyway, I, I now coming back to the technical question. Okay, so that was just a feedback related to the corporate governance. Okay, let me come back to the question. You said in the initial question that you normally your client stay between 60 days to 90 days. Am I normally? right? Normally, normally your client, the pay, client pay payment is basically yeah, 60 to 90 days. Average is probably 60 to 90 days. Yeah, but now in the last few months, it's not been the same. We have we are experiencing even 120 days right now. No, no, I am not even explaining one twenty days. It is more than six months. If you see your revenue, okay, of half year is twenty two crore forty four lakh. Am I correct? Right, twenty uh, four. And twenty four crore. Okay, let me take other income also. Then twenty four crore sixty two lakh. Am I right? Your half year is revenue. Ah. And 20. your data is more than that. Twenty four crore seventy lakh. So basically, you have the outstanding of more than 180 days, six months. No, how are you? I'm not. No, I'm not able to understand your question. Sorry, you have to just repeat that. Okay. Okay. So let me tell. What is your uh, uh, total revenue for the half year in March 24? 24 to 60 to net. Am I right? Yeah. Correct. Okay. And you said right now it is stretched, and you are getting the payment. In rather than 60 days or 90 days, you are getting in 120 days. Am I right? You said this. Yeah. Yeah. So this is the same button. Okay. If I match this with the data, fair decisible in the balance sheet, your outstanding amount is 24 or 70 days more than six months revenue. Am I right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. Because we have data. I tell you as an example, uh, we have even older data. Like uh, let me give you an example of Tippet Studio. The pet studio is a debtor of 80 more than 80 months to us just now. They just declared bankruptcy after taking over by Phantom. So you can't. We, we actually have certain debtors which are even older than uh, six months. 
तो बस इन क्वेश्चन नंबर वो है यू हैव मोर देन सिक्स मंथ स्टूडियो हैव यू प्रोवाइडेड प्रोविजन फॉर वेजेस फॉर दैट बिकॉज़ इट इज 18 मंथ सॉरी हैव यू डन द प्रोविजनिंग ऑफ द वेजेस बिकॉज़ इट इज मोर देन 18 मंथ प्रोविजनिंग ऑफ वी कैन प्रोजेक्ट फॉर बैटेड राइट ना दे गॉन इन टू चैप्टर इलेवन एंड वी आर गॉड आर टीम इन द यूएस फॉर रिकवरी सो हाउ कैन बी पुट दैट इज अ बैड डेट इफ पुट दैट इज अ बैड डेट माई चैप्टर इलेवन रिकवरी केस हैज नो स्टैंडिंग अकॉर्डिंग टू द इंडियन अकाउंटिंग स्टैंडर्ड एंड इनफैक्ट इवन द आई एफ आर एच यू आर सपोज टू पुट द प्रोविजन आई एम नॉट बी टेलिंग यू दैट यू पुट द बैटेड इन द पी एन एल But you have to do the provisioning. You can check with your finance team. Who is sitting with you? Okay, I'm going to make a note of this also and check with our CA. But yes, we did discuss about the bad debt side of this. But then that weekends our case against uh, uh, the recovery of that amount. So that's why we didn't put. No, it, 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 it won't. It won't. It's a standard policy across the company. Corporate. It is uh, uh, according to the ICAI. According to the company law. Also. Okay. 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 Ok
So I don't, I'm, I'm, our vision right now for everything that we are doing is limited up to 26. Why? VFX is right now at a cusp where we don't know how AI is going to impact it. What is good better, uh, you know, like uh, the writers, uh, AI has been uh, barred to be used, uh, you know, in writing of films, whether it's going to be barred in VFX, not barred. MPAA, that's the Motion Pictures Association of America and the studios, they take a lot of debates and discussions. We are waiting and we are seeing it uh, unfold. At the same time, like we've discussed earlier also, we are taking our own steps to ensure that Digicore as a company is supported by multiple streams of revenue within the industry or related, uh, uh, you know, businesses within the entertainment industry. So, assuming for any reason, if, you know, AI disrupts VFX, and in fact, by the way, we are embracing AI. We are not against AI. We are not the ones who are scared of AI. We are the ones among the few studios who will embrace AI. There's going to be a very interesting announcement from Digicore on the AI front as well. I don't know if uh, many of you have heard of Sora. We've been able to crack our own version of Sora. So uh, there's going to be a very interesting announcement on the AI front as well within the next couple of months from Digicore. So far, we are all our plans and projections are up to FI26. So uh, maybe once we're half year, halfway through this year or a little more, we will be able to give you clarity on maybe 27, 28, 29, 30 as well, maybe. Thank you, sir. Ladies and gentlemen, due to time constraint, that was the last question for today's conference call. I would like to hand the conference over to Ms. Shani for closing comments. In the conference call of Digico Studios Limited, if you have any queries, you can write to us at research at greatkirinadvisors.com. Once again, thank you for joining the conference. Thank you, everyone. Really appreciate your time. On behalf of Kiran Advisors, that concludes this conference. Thank you for joining us, and you may now disconnect your lines. Thank you.